Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. So I'm Anita Finley, and I've had terrific guests on, and I just have another one. And this is a little different. Her name is Mary Ann Sanane, and I'm very happy to meet you, Mary Ann. And you, uh, you're, another, you're another magazine producer, aren't you? I am an investigative journalist and a filmmaker and an entrepreneur and a functional medicine consultant. Ah, that's a lot on your plate. And <laughs> I know it's called Funny Colony. Why is it called Funny Colony? Well, we were trying to, you know, it's not necessarily the best name, Honey Colony, but we were creating a colony where we were proverbially foraging for honey and um, and pollen in the shape of information and products to empower our audience. So colony in the sense of a hive, um, since I directed the film Vanishing of the Bees, and the bees are very important to me and uh, have a lot to teach us all. I don't know if you know that, but today if you go to Google, they're doing a whole thing. I do. <laughs> yes. I saw that. I thought it was so appropriate. It's quite cute. I thought someone really worked hard on that. Well, it's Earth Day, and uh, yes. I'm not a big <laughs> fan of Google, but I did notice that they have bees. Um, right. Yep. <laughs> well, you're, well, it's perfect for Earth Day. I, I do agree. So many people, you know, now, of course, everyone's suffering from this virus, and they're not... They're not having fun, or if they are having fun, you know, it's with a little bit of a uh, chip on their shoulder. But let's just go through you. And I, I think what I loved when I went on your website was appreciation and, and gratitude. Yeah. That's very big yeah. in your life, isn't it? Yes, I think that gratitude is alchemy. And there was definitely a time where um, I didn't understand that. And I've lived many, many years in physical pain and uh, after having a near-death experience. And so it's really about perception and how, you know, not what happens to you, but what you do with what happens to you. And it's it's a practice, like we're all human. And uh, the idea is, is to cultivate mindfulness and self-awareness. And, and I, I really wish more people would be able to do that, given that we're not, you know, we're animals, but we have consciousness, and we're living in a time of great awakening. And this is an opportunity, this virus, whatever this virus is, is, is an opportunity to really wake up to what might really be happening behind the uh, illusions. That's so well said. I have to tell you, too, that when I walk my dog, it's so quiet, and I now hear the birds I didn't hear. I hear... I hear ducks in the pond. I hear so many things, and it's, we, we didn't listen before so well. But now it's a whole new wave. You're actually right. I love what you said about it's not what happens to you, but what you do with what happens to you. That's very yeah. clever, and that's true. So tell me about this near-death experience. Uh, what What's happened in your life? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one, I want to know, yeah, I just want to note that, yeah, it's one we're giving, if anything, this is a little respite for the earth that we've been assaulting. And so it's wonderful if we can actually quiet our minds and that, you know, you're, you're noticing the sounds of birds and I'm, I'm in the jungle and, um, that's my background. You know, I just saw some monkeys an hour ago and it, it really, uh, helps me keep sane uh, because, like all bets are off, and we're in the wild wild west. So, as far as my near death experience, I was new to America, and um, you know Canada is much different today under Trudeau. But when I was growing up in the late seventies, early eighties, I never really questioned health insurance. I showed up um, and. I was here, I was in Los Angeles, I think it was year three and a half or four, and uh, maybe shorter. Anyway, I, I walked into a crosswalk and I was hit by an SUV and oh. uh, dr 
dragged as a pedestrian into the adjacent crosswalk, oh. which was 50 feet. And so miraculously, the SUV didn't um, roll over my brain, which is my best asset. And then I uh, just suffered lots of broken bones, broken spirit, uh, had to learn how to walk again, and really was an initiation that led me to health and wellness and wanting to be my own best health advocate and then empower others, you know, really discovering the corruption in in Western medicine on a, on a very basic level as a, as a patient and then wanting to be of service and then eventually the bees flew into my life. Um, but that near-death experience, I was already on a spiritual path since I, I've been 13. And um, I remember after a week in the hospital, um, being in the ambulance, and there was like a star, like a real um, sharpness to everything during the ride home. And I felt really grateful to be alive, but I also had a 13 inch metal rod in my leg. And, um, eventually, you know, I removed that rod and I could say that 90% plus of people don't do that. Um, and it, it, it really helped, but, but that really initiated me, uh, to what it's like to be in pain and, uh, to feel the pain, to become one with all sorts of different pain. Uh, and then, Eventually later, uh, had another initiation when I was sprayed inadvertently by pesticides, ironically, just like honeybees. And uh, so every every crap thing, and there's been so many, like I was going to, my nickname is Mimi, and I was going to do a short stories of Mimi's medical mishaps, because my <laughs> body pretty much exploded after um that initial trauma and of course they didn't they don't tell you that you have a PTSD and I didn't have health insurance so they didn't even give me physiotherapy I used yoga to literally walk teach myself how to walk again uh so I I used all those opportunities to really like delve into whether it was like titanium hardware and then I um something happened with my belly and I was always bloated. And this is like 2005. So eventually became gluten free way before um, it became, you know, the kind of the norm. And I consider myself a visionary and, and, and uh, want to help empower others through my experiences to help save them a lot of time and money and anguish. That's fantastic. I just loved ha hearing you. I was thinking, what's the word for you? It's a warrior woman or, or something. <laughs> I'll take but that. It's something. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you, somebody wants to get in touch with you. How? Uh, and I know oh. you have your website, but let's, let's go through that. What should they do? Yes, please. Please understand that uh, I have been uh, banned and, and censored and that I stand for freedom of speech uh, so basically, I kid that I kind of work for tweets now because the mainstream <laughs> media is not <laughs> very embracing of what I have to share with them, whether it's about uh, coronavirus or CBD or whatever in, in regards to health and wellness and big pharma corruption. So please follow me on, on Twitter. Um, I really have been I've been covering the coronavirus since the beginning of January and I'm obsessed and uh, that's Miriam Hinane. And uh, I have a YouTube channel. So it's youtube.com forward slash Miriam Hinane B Lady, which is a nickname of mine, the B Lady. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And yeah, buzz on over to honeycolony.com or simply transformative.com. I'm also on Instagram. Um, and I'm, I'm just trying to get truth out there and, and get people to realize their potential. Great. Well, I can tell you just from your voice and just how you are, you're, you're very special. I, I was, as you were talking about things happening to people, I was very fortunate when I, I lived in, in the Miami most of my life and 
went to Minneapolis when I was uh, first married in 1974, and I uh, wow. had the privilege of I've had the privilege of being a uh, volunteer for a woman in an iron lung. And a lot of people don't know what an iron lung is at this point in their life, but yeah. she was in. She had polio when she was nine, and she's now 30. And she's in this iron lung, and she is a braver, more wonderful woman. She painted with a stick in her mouth. She she um, wow. wrote. She wrote books with a stick in her mouth. She uh, she was fantastic, and that was the change in my life. So everything you're doing is is just where I am. I, I appreciate things, and and so I'm so glad that we've become you know somebody to know each other. Uh, Thank and you, I, Anita. Have, yeah. Thank you. I'd like to comment on on that. That okay. um, cer- certainly, I have gone through periods, whether it was during the pain or um, during fighting for my company or during dealing with mold toxicity, where I've had to deal with a lot of anger that's come up, and um, you know, so really appreciation and gratitude and mindfulness. It's it's really like going to the gym. Um, Marianne Williamson talks about this in Course in Miracles. Uh, you, you really need to practice and you need to have forgiveness for yourself and for others and to be able to play or interact with people that can have also that same um, acceptance or mindfulness because we've become a society now where it, people are so vitriolic and I can argue to say that people are suffering from a virus of hate or are mm-hmm. overcome by fear. So I just, it's a process and it, it's not something that happens overnight and it's about catching yourself and um, being a functional medicine coach is, is all about uh, steeping it in positive psychology. Definitely, yeah, the positive psychology is also something that hasn't been around that long. I remember uh, oh. one of my neighbors went and got a master's degree in that from, I guess, in Pittsburgh, wherever it started and uh, wherever it was. And it's, it's fabulous, positive psychology. Yeah. And, and if people could, everything happens. And if they could just turn it into something positive, we, we have a writer uh, who writes a column in Boomer Times every month. And and she uh, the name of her book was Yes, uh, yes, you can do it. And every time she writes a column, it's about something negative that now is a reason why it's negative, and now it's positive. So yeah, I love real, that. Yeah, it's a real skill. Uh, so you, <laughs> it's a now, skill. You're right. It is a skill. skill. This isn't easy. Is <laughs> Tell me about your parents. How did you get this? You must have gotten it from your parents. No, it's not from my parents. I don't know okay. where it's from, but... Um, I think everybody is special and I've certainly heard that I'm a special spirit and I will mm-hmm. own that. Um, not, not to discredit any, anybody else just to, um, so I don't know. Cause I look at my sister and she's works for big pharma <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, it's completely, where's gold? I, I joke cause I, I, I'm not really into materialistic Things. So I, I don't know, but from a very young age, definitely at 13 when I had um, someone in my Sunday school class that was ironically hit by a 18-wheeler. And, uh, um, oh, my God. Um, and I, I just like to say this, that he really opened my eyes to move away from Christianity into spirituality and near-death experiences. And um, I, I've made contact with him um, on on many occasions in a very magical way. And uh, it, it really cemented my belief that there's something more out there. And there are so many realms that go beyond this third dimension that some of us work in. Um, And it's not just, it's not woo-woo. It's reclaiming our, our, our potential again. So, I mean, as far as my parents, my, my mom is like my biggest fan. And um, as far as my dad, I don't think he really sees how awesome of a daughter he has, but um, (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm sure your mom has told them. But you see, even what you said about your mom, the support. They don't talk, no. They, they right. don't. But, the, they're su- not, but yeah. the support that she gives you is why you oh, yeah. feel you can do this. It's so important, really, that, that you do that. Um, the other thing that uh, years ago I took a course called um, Silver Mind Control. Have you ever heard of that? Mm. Say, say the beginning again. S- the, severing, the severing mind control. No, Silva. Oh. S-I-L-V-A. That was the man. You need to look it up because it's okay. fabulous. It's all about it's all about energy. It's all about energy. And when you learn about energy, and you do know all this, not you, but our listeners. When you learn about energy, it takes care of everything, and it 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 makes you a, makes you able to do everything. There was a point where I can go down into an alpha level, and in my mind, I can just walk outside through the windows up to the sky. So, silver mind control will be something you're gonna would would be very you, you'd smile when you do that. So I'm thank sure we're gonna be talking sharing. again, but yeah, yeah. thank so you for I'm, sharing I'm very that, much Kevin. into your yeah into what you're doing, and I admire you. Because you've taken Thank a lot you. of arrows, I'm sure that you're taking them. Uh, yeah, you were in the jungle. Where, you said you're now in the jungle. Where's that? I'm in Costa Rica because I felt things were going to um, hit the fan. I felt um, intuitively, and I've been called to leave America, and, and now um, I'm, I'm here for now. And uh, you know, I'd like to go back but I don't think there is any going back because this is like a global uh, 9-11 so so, um, I'm in the jungle online with the with the with the nature with nature in the backdrop and and I'm a digital nomad and I've been doing this for um, since I started my company I've, I've worked from Rome from Greece, from Costa Rica, from many places, um, running my company and building it up, and um, then then felt the wrath of techno fascism in in 2016, and and really felt um, not only as a journalist covering it, but as an entrepreneur feeling that there was censorship and and that it was becoming increasingly difficult to share a message of natural remedies um, because really, if you understand the whole medical system, it's been engineered and it's not really dealing with, you know, functional medicine is very specific, individual based, um, looks at a lot of variables. It's very specific. Uh, Western medicine is compartmentalized and certainly has its role. um, But, is not holistic. And uh, I, I certainly, Western medicine has personally failed me and many others that I know. Let me tell everybody that you're now listening to my guest, Mary Ann, it's with an M, M-A-R-Y-A-M, her name. And she is, uh, she said she's, call- I didn't know she was calling from the jungle in Costa Rica, but that's, <laughs> I love Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a great place. And and, and we're being treated to somebody very special. Uh, it's been a long time since I, uh, I've i talked to someone like you. I do from time to time have guests who are very spiritual. and But you're certainly an entrepreneur. We're able to take everything that you're talking about and, and making it, uh, as you said, with products. I did take a look at your website and looks like lots of natural things. And you don't know this. I'm a gerontologist. And also mm. I... Uh, and my my uh, daughter is a acupuncture physician who lives in Portland, so I'm kind of surrounded by a lot of your stuff. But you're very brave, as I called you before, a warrior, because it takes a lot to have something in your mind and fight what uh, fight the good fight, right? Yes, and um, I want to say on that that you know recently I I've come into contact, especially on Twitter, with a whole group of people that I've never met that are fighting, standing for medical freedom, standing for freedom of speech. And it has inspired me so much to have that hive that for me, it's, it's very important for whatever reason to be 
to be in service to something that's greater than than myself that will actually make a difference because um we're we're just watching you know our world um on the surface like r- really change um with this global lockdown and and uh so yeah it, it's it's part of being a hive really you know and a honeybee can't live without her hive for more than yeah. 24 hours and yet, but she's a she's like a soul worker bee doing her thing, but brings back pollen and honey and, and nectar um, for for the for the greater good, which is the queen, which is for the you know the superorganism that is the hive. That's true. Um, I know that it, it isn't a bee, but uh, our book of the month coming up in May is called the Butterfly Club. And I'm fascinated by butterflies. And and I know Costa Rica has fabulous butterflies. Yeah. So you've been to Costa Rica? Yes, I have. I haven't been in the jungles. I was there, you know, in the major city. A friend of my own mm. coffee plantation. But I haven't seen the best part of it. But I do know about it. And um, and I'm I'm envious of you because that's a fantastic <laughs> place to be. Yeah, that's a wonderful I have to thing say. to do. When I do my recordings, I'm like, oh my, there must be so many people who are so jealous right now because sure. I have like, you know, I, I just feel really blessed. There's no shortage. I, we are on lockdown, by the way. We we are, are not allowed to go to the beach. Uh, cars are not allowed. Yeah, because they have to follow suit to America, even though, I mean, they, they announced a state of emergency here based on one death. Um, last I checked, which was a couple of days ago, there were three cases. And in any case, I, I'm very critical of the tests and the data. And, and that's a whole other conversation. Well, but you're, you certainly have, you have picked a, pl- a, picked a place in time in society where you're needed, I think. And it takes a brave woman to be able to speak what she believes and also be able to uh, have the power for people to listen to you and to take you seriously. Well, I thank you, and I, I appreciate being given an opportunity. I have a lot of stuff to say, and my third chakra is fired up. But it's difficult if you if you don't have the opportunities to have the voice because you're censored. I mean, I just had a uh, publication write a smear piece on us, and these are attacks. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a lot of attacks and censorship and people being shadow banned and uh, digitally mm-hmm. assassinated and demonetized. This is real. And it's mm-hmm. been happening for a long time. And it needs to stop, especially, I mean, we're supposed to have a constitution. And so now on social media, people might have freedom of speech, but if they don't have, they don't have freedom of reach, like Sasha Baron Cohen said in his uh, speech with the ADL. Yeah, it's it's a very big world now, and I don't think people ever understood when they said global what that really meant. You know, it used to be we had a little America, and now we don't have a little America, and um, it's a very it's a scary time. But but I always think back at my friend Darlene in the Iron Lung. And what she was mm-hmm. able to create all those years, and she never felt pain. She would have loved to have felt pain. She didn't. But her hospital room with the iron lung was a place where people came when they wanted to be rejuvenated, when they wanted to feel good. And and she she created that for me, too. That's someone I'll never forget her. Uh, and I, I'll tell you, you know, when you think about it, someone like that, as much as we would think, well, how can she do anything but just so something's breathing for her? She actually mm. typed beautiful letters to the editor of the Minneapolis Tribune because at that time they didn't have the buses for the disabled. And she, day after day after day, wrote that she could make a difference. So when you have someone like that in your life, you know, everything else is, sure, for the moment you get a little scared or something, but uh, you keep turning back to that because, just as you said, some things happened to you that were meant to happen, and I believe that was meant to happen for me. I I I agree whole wholeheartedly. I I think that, I mean, from my perspective, um, we come into this 
incarnation and we have certain lessons to learn and having almost died, it's foolish not to learn those lessons because I believe you're just going to keep on, you know, things. I mean, everybody can relate to this, that there's something they need to learn and they don't learn it and it just gets amplified and amplified. And then next thing you know, they have an accident or a tragedy and it's like, you know, you were getting the signals and the universe is talking to us and we're dealing you know, this is spiritual warfare, what's going on right now. And this is really a time to go within and to deal with your crap and to really be honest. Because there's many people that say that they're on a spiritual path, but they're not able to say sorry. They're not able to step aside and look at themselves objectively. Nothing happens in a vacuum. If you're upset with someone else, you've done something to contribute to that. And so to have to be able to even communicate with that understanding that you're trying to get a resolution and not like trying to prove who's right or who's wrong, um, there there needs to be more of this. Um, we're really being asked to step up to the plate. So step up to the plate. We need more of you, Mary Ann. That's that. I'm so glad. I did not know what this interview was going to be like, frankly. I I'm didn't so, either. I, I'm ecstatic. This turned out great. I was thinking about my friend Wayne Dyer, who I had a lot of relationship with in a sense. And, oh, that's and lovely. And he really, yeah, he was that special guy. If you if you believe it, you know, you'll see it. And uh, um, and I, yeah, I didn't exactly. think that we're over. Uh, I think they're playing the music, but I, let's see. Uh, that's right. We're off at uh, 110. And so that's... Okay. Uh, that's about now, but I, I want to, I want to talk to you again. I think I want to help you with your products. There's a lots of stuff we can do together. So uh, we'll be thank back. You. Okay, but yeah, you thank you. Yeah, thank you, Anita. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it more than you do. This is uh, <laughs> so be sure to this is Mary Ann. That's M A R Y A M. Uh, Hyneen, and that's Hyneen, and that's H A N A N. No, H H E N E N E I N. Right, H E N E I N. And I do thank you again, and everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Thanks, Anita. Thank you, Mary.